Spring is here. Springtime in Southern California. Flowers are blooming. The sun is sending down its glorious rays while the birds are singing in the trees. birds, let us fly to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills. At the moment, Rochester is dusting the living room. <laughs> Bessame, Bessame, mucho. Each time I cling to your lips, I hear music divine. My, my, clean this room and I clean this room, and before you know it, it's dusty again. Seems like I'm in here every month. <laughs> Bessame, bessame mucho, como si fuera esta noche la última Rochester, Rochester, what are you doing in there? Just a little spring cleaning, boss. Oh, well, don't dust the table. I've got a couple of phone numbers written on it. <laughs> phone numbers? Yes, uh, one in particular, Gloria Bagelquist. <laughs> Very good friend of mine. Uh-oh, I just wiped out a beautiful friendship. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, why did you have to clean the table anyway? But, boss, I didn't know it was a table until I got through dusting it. <laughs> now, that's silly. Didn't you see those Duncan Fife legs? Uh-huh. Well, what'd you think it was? Gloria Bagel Quiz. <laughs> oh, stop being funny and go on with your cleaning. I'll be in the library. Okay. dum da da Da, 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 da. Well, look what's on top of the piano. Mr. Benny's violin. Maybe I ought to dust that, too. And look what's up here on the mantel. Nail clippers. All I have to do is clip the strings on this violin, and I will replace the dog as man's best friend. <laughs> I just heard it wasn't Bessame Moose. <laughs> Rochester, there's something funny going on in here. I want to know just what it was. Now, what was that sound I heard? Sound? That plink, 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 plink. Plink, 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 plink. Yes. Well, let me think, 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 think. <laughs> Think, 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 think. About the plink, 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 plink. Now cut that out. <laughs> okay, let's both forget it. Rochester, I don't know what's come over you lately. You're getting so silly, sometimes I... Come in. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. It was such a beautiful day, I went for a walk and thought I'd drop in. Well, I'm glad you did. I called up the whole gang this morning to come over for a swim in my pool, but you weren't home. A swimming party? Gee, that'll be fun. Yeah. But, Jack, if you're inviting people to your house, you ought to get rid of that camel. The odor is something awful. What are you talking about? My camel's out in the backyard, and we're in the house with the doors closed. I know, but that smell is strong enough to turn the doorknob. <laughs> well, Mary, if you were living here, you'd get used to it. Jack, if that's a proposal, that camel isn't helping any. <laughs> I'm not proposing. Anyway, Mary, I can't get rid of the camel because I hired an Arab to take care of it. A real Egyptian Arab. A real Arab from Egypt? Yeah. Well, gee, doesn't he miss the desert? Yes, but I take him to Azusa twice a week. <laughs> Mondays and Thursdays. Say, Mary, if you stay for my swimming party, you'll get to see him later. Okay. Here, give me your jacket and I'll hang it up in this closet. Thanks. You know, when the... Well, I'll be... Look, my violin and the strings have been caught. Rochester! Rochester! You call me, boss? Now, Rochester, why did you cut the strings on my violin? I just wanted to prove something. Prove what? That life can be beautiful. <laughs> I can't understand you, Rochester. I don't know why you keep doing things to make me unhappy. Do you know what I'm going to do with you? Oh, boss, are we going on Mr. Anthony's program again? <laughs> Well, 
Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves, cu yourself cutting the strings on my violin. Don't you like music? <laughs> Mary, stop laughing. You'll only encourage him to do it again. I know. Well, come on, the gang, the gang ought to be here any minute now. Let's go out in the kitchen and prepare a little snack. Okay. Oh, Jack, I think I'll phone my house and tell Butterfly to bring my bathing suit over. Sure, go right ahead. Oh, gee, I've only got four pennies. That's all right. You can owe me a penny. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Okay. Here. Thanks. Uh, while you're phoning, Mary, I'll make some toast for the sandwiches. Okay. Uh, Jack, the line was busy. Oh, here. <laughs> Jack! Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, I... I had a little mayonnaise on my finger. <laughs> now, come on, Mary, help me with the sandwiches, will you? Da da dum, de da da dum, sweet Georgia Brown. De da da dum, de da dum dum, de da da dum. Gee, I hope the gang gets here pretty soon. Gee, it'd be fun getting in that pool now that the nice weather is here. It sure will. Say, Jack, when did you have the pool filled? Oh, about three weeks ago. Who did it? Are you kidding? <laughs> It did rain a little, you know. <laughs> Say, if I expect to get my bathing suit, I better call Butterfly again. You don't have to, Mary. My girlfriend, uh, Gladys Abisko, left her suit here. You can wear that. Jack, her suit would be much too big for me. Now, wait a minute, Mary. Gladys isn't so fat. She just brought across the hips. <laughs> I know, but her hips run clear up to her shoulders. <laughs> oh, Mary, stop being catty. Well, I'm going to phone Butterfly and get my own suit. Okay. Thanks. Hello? Hello, Butterfly. This is Miss Livingston. I've been trying to get you, but the line's been busy. Oh, yes. My boyfriend Jerome called, and he wanted to take me to a movie. May I have the night off? Why, certainly, Butterfly. Anytime Jerome comes in from camp, it's perfectly all right. Thank you. He's taking me to see Madame Curie. Madame Curie? Butterfly, I thought you saw that picture last night. I did, but I didn't understand it. <laughs> well, do you think you'll understand it tonight? Who cares? I'll be with Jerome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Don't tell Jerome. I won't. Mary. Mary, hurry up. Tell her to bring your bathing suit. Okay. Well, look, Butterfly, the reason I called is that I want you to bring my bathing suit over to Mr. Benny's house. Oh, hasn't he got one of his own? <laughs> no, no, Butterfly, I'm going to wear it. It's in the bottom dresser drawer on the right-hand side. Yes, ma'am. But, Miss Livingston, I don't know how to get to Mr. Benny's house. Oh, well, look, first you go to the corner of Lexington. Just a minute, Miss Livingston, I'll get the fountain pen and write it down. All right. I'm ready. Good. Now, first you go to the corner of Lexington. Just a minute, Miss Livingston. I'll get some paper to write it on. <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, first you go to the corner of Lexington and Camden. Just a minute, Miss Livingston. I'm stuck. You're stuck? Yes. I sat down on the fountain pen. <laughs> Butterfly, I'm in a hurry. Go to the corner of Lexington and Camden, catch the bus there, and get off at Mr. Benny's house. The bus goes right past it. Yes, ma'am. But how will I know which is Mr. Benny's house? Well, you see a big sign out in front that says, if I can't act better than Paul Lucas, I'll eat my hat. <laughs> It's a big sign. But, Miss Livingston, I broke my glasses and I can't read. Well, that's all right. You'll see Mr. Benny out there eating his hat. 
<laughs> Goodbye, butterfly. Bye. Now, Mary, that wasn't a bit funny. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Imagine putting a sign on the lawn that you're a better actor than Paul Lucas. Mary Rochester wrote that sign out there. Well, why don't you make him take it down? Freedom of the press, that's all. <laughs> Anyway, Mary, the reason I... Boss! 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 Rochester, what's happened? What's the matter? Boss, you'll just have to get rid of that camel. Get rid of my camel? Why? What'd she do? Nothing, but if you get rid of your camel, you'll get rid of that Arab. He wants to kill me. The Arab? What did you do to him? Nothing. Boss, I was just... Never mind. Here he comes. I'll ask him. Mustafa. Mustafa. Is the kind of ragged Dima Sibnish? I'm on my way to the Lao Bar Rochester while I'm in Rome in Bedcombe. Laos. <laughs> Mustafa, what did, what did Rochester do to you? Second, my uncle got my dentalata. What I did, I had all the flusi. The low barra. Rochester. <laughs> did did you do that? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Well, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Mustafa, now calm down and tell me, what did Rochester do to you? He's a kind of ragged damn Sibnish, and I'm an Ueto. Come, Seven, baby needs new shoes. <laughs> Rochester, come back here. Rochester, when that Arab came here, I warned you not to get him into a dice game. But, boss, it wasn't my fault. I was teaching him English, and we drifted into cubic arithmetic. <laughs> Don't let it happen again. And give him back his turban. It looks silly on you. <laughs> now, Moosey... Uh, Moosey, go take care of my camel like you're supposed to. The law matter! Well, in room in Betko! Mustafa, control yourself! Rochester, Bakhtarni, Fadahni, Acha, Kulu, Flusi, Taratko, Mahar! What a house. This is crazier than a radio program. <laughs> Say, Jack, I won't wait for Butterfly to bring my bathing suit. I'll go in the other room and put on Gladys's. Okay. Come in! Where? Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Jack. Hiya, fellas. Say, how come the three of you all got here at the same time? Oh, we got a carpool. A carpool? Yeah. Yes, sir, we sure have. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice. Say... Who are you? Herman Peabody. <laughs> Herman, Herman Peabody? Oh, it's all right, Jack. He belongs to our Share the Ride Club. Oh, say, I go downtown a lot. Maybe I could get in your carpool, too. No, nah, sorry, Jackson. We haven't got enough room. Oh, too many people already, huh? Not only that, but two of them never get out. Never get out? Yeah, some sailor and these girls. <laughs> that girl with the sailor is mine. <laughs> Why? Well, come on, fellas. Let's all go swimming. Me too. Okay, you, you too, Herman. I really shouldn't stay. I ought to be working. I'm an insurance salesman. But it's so beautiful out, Herman. Why don't you take the day off? Well, okay. Now let's get into our bathing suits. Oh, and... I just thought of something. What, Herman? Maybe I shouldn't take the day off. Maybe if I work today, I'd sell somebody an insurance policy. Well, you can sell it to him tomorrow. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, fellas, but let's something go... might happen to him today. <laughs> Who? That man that won't be here tomorrow to buy the policy I should have sold him today. May he rest in peace. What are you talking about? Think of his poor wife and children. Oh, now, Herman, you're letting your imagination run away with you. you... I guess you're right. Come on, let's have fun. <laughs> yeah, boy! Kid. Come on, everybody, let's get into our bathing suit. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Dennis, you're supposed to take your clothes off first. 
<laughs> you ought to know that. Oh, say, Mr. Benny, I don't think I ought to stay. <laughs> Why not? That poor widow and her two children, I can't get them out of my mind. Well, look, if it bothers you that much, Herman, why don't you go? Okay, I will. All right. Say, Jackson, how do I look in my bathing suit? Phil, only girls are supposed to wear bare midriffs. <laughs> but as long as you've got it on, wear it. Mr. Benny, I decided to stay. Good. <laughs> oh, man! We'll wait for you, but hurry up. We want to get in as much swimming as we can before we go to rehearsal. Oh, by the way, Dennis, what are you going to sing today? On the program? Yeah. Well, I don't know the name of it, but it goes like this. I'll get by. Say, Dennis, that song will be swell for the program, and the name of it is I'll Get By. Oh, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Hey, Mary, we're waiting. Aren't you ready yet? Here I come. Hello, fellas. How do I look? Oh, fine, Mary. Swell, Mary. Say, Jackson, before I go in, I'm going to use your telephone. Okay, go ahead. Well, that's a fine way to treat me. You let Phil use the phone for nothing. Never mind. Uh, say, Mary, uh, you thought uh, Gladys Abisco's bathing suit would be too big for you, didn't you? Well? Why, it's snug. Look how you had to pull it up to pin it up over your shoulders. Well, Jack, I've got a surprise for you. What? I'm only wearing the pants. <laughs> oh. I'm wearing a shirt. <laughs> Well, it's, um... <laughs> well, it, it looks, uh... It looks real, uh... It looks real nice on you, Herman. I'm in here, too. <laughs> now, get out of there, Dennis. You've got your own suit. Say, John... Don, you must have been... Don, you must have been out in the sun a lot. You're as brown as a berry. No, oh, Jack. All right, you're as brown as a grape nut. Are you satisfied? No. Uh, a malty rich grape nut? Well... A munchy crunchy one? With milk and sugar? Yes. Yes. <laughs> pronounce you man and wife. Let's go. <laughs> Mary. Yeah, we can go in now. Here comes Mr. Harris. Good. Say, Phil, did you make your phone call? Yeah. Here, Jackson, you can punch my ticket. Okay. <laughs> Now I've seen everything. No, you haven't. Wait, you ask for a towel. <laughs> Rochester, go back to the kitchen and take that turban off. If you know what I mean, Rochester. <laughs> well, come on. Well, come on, kids. Let's all run out and jump in the pool. Okay. Gosh, I hope the water isn't too cold. Oh, don't be a sissy, Phil. Come on, everybody. Last one in is a rotten man. Gee, the water. Yeah, it's great. Hey, look at me. I'm a whale. Gosh, this is swell. Hey, look at Jack. Where? Oh, Jackson, come on in. <laughs> Is it cold? No, no, the water's warm. Well... If you don't believe us, stick your foot in and see. Okay. Say, it is warm. Mr. Benny, take your foot out of my mouth. <laughs> oh, oh, 
Oh, oh, oh. Hey, Jackson, the best way is to get up on the diving board and then jump right in. Well, okay, get out of the way, everybody. Keep away from around the diving board. Here I come. Darn, he landed right back on the diving board. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, Jackson's hurt. Ooh. Mr. Benny, aren't you coming in? <laughs> Ooh. Mr. Benny. Herman, can't you see he's unconscious? Well, when he comes to, will you tell him I decided to go? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Now, come on, boys. Let's pick Jack up and carry him to a more comfortable spot. Okay, I've got his feet. I've got his head. Hey, look at me. I'm Monty Woolley. I'm Monty Woolley. Dennis, take that off your chin and put it back on Mr. Benny's head. <laughs> Here, give it to me. I'll hold it. Look at poor Jack. Yeah. I wonder what to do now. I know. Oh, Rochester. Yeah, Mr. Harris. Rochester, there's been an accident. Bring some whiskey and some spirits of ammonia. Yes, sir. Gee, I better cover Jack up with his robe. There. Look at him lying there with such a blank expression. Yeah, let's turn him over so he's facing us. <laughs> oh, good. Here comes Rochester with the whiskey and the spirits of ammonia. Here you are, Mr. Harris. Okay. <clears throat> now give Mr. Benny the spirits of ammonia. <laughs> give it to him. Here, Jack. Here. Ooh. It's no use, fellas. He's still groggy. I know how to revive him. Let's pick him up and throw him in the pool. Yeah, that'll do it. All right, fellas, lift him up. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> I went to all this trouble to keep out of the pool. I'm going to stay out. What? It wasn't easy to land back on that diving board. <laughs> I had to practice. Oh, so that's it. Come on, fellas, in with him. Put me down. Put me down. One, two... <laughs> Darn you, fellas! You'll never come to my... Say, the water is warm. Gee, it's nice. Hey, come on in, gang. Come on in, you great big sissies. You'll go... Say, hey, Mr. Wilson. Yes, Herman? Where'd everybody go? Oh, they had to go to rehearsal. Gee, that's too bad. Just when I decided to stay. <laughs> now I'll be lonesome. Well, if you want, I'll talk to you. Please do. Well, now, look, Herman. When you start out in the morning to sell your insurance, don't just rush out of the house. First, eat a good breakfast. You'll do a better job and feature malty rich grape nuts. You fascinate me. Tell me more. <laughs> Well, now, Herman, no matter what your job is, you'll do it better if you start off with a nourishing breakfast. And grape nuts make an ideal breakfast dish because they bring you grand all-around whole grain nourishment. Herman, grape nuts are crisp and crunchy with a sweet as a nut flavor that makes them swell eating every time. So, Herman, if, if you want to be a good insurance salesman, eat a good breakfast, do a better job, and include delicious, nourishing grape nuts. Hey, you're nice. Well, thanks, Herman, but I have to run along now to rehearsal. You have to go? Yes, yes, I do, Herman. But when you leave, don't forget to turn out the lights, will you? Okay, bye. Uh, we're a little late. Good night, folks. 